I did take another test, which, you know, you get in contact with your cousins and cousins mm -hmm. that you didn't know you had, but it's suspect in terms of a lot of that was European and not directly related to African ancestry. So I wanted to know that part of it. You know, it's there you might have this much Scandinavian, you might have this much, but it didn't tell me nothing. It just says a percentage of African, but it didn't break it down in terms of uh, where exactly. And I was, uh, another friend was asking me, I said, well, you know, I went to school with a lot of folks from the continent, mm -hmm. and I sort of had an affinity from, and to go to church with the people from Ghana. And I'm like, are they my cousins or, you know, other countries, not so much, you know, it's a little standoffish and I hate to say that, but that was just me and how I, how we related in school and things like that. So you sort of get a feeling that you might be right, but then I might be wrong. So I just want to know. Possibilities are all around us. Everywhere we look, we see opportunity in unexpected places. And when we share our knowledge, vision, and connections, we turn great ideas into action in communities all around the world that we call home. Like transforming an old bus to feed hungry children or providing life-saving equipment to those who need it most. From fighting disease to rebuilding schools. Together, we can make real change happen. We are Rotary. We are people of action. Get involved today at rotary.org slash action. In America, millions of families are facing hunger. Many are forced to choose between food and other necessities. I'm stuck between paying for medications or paying for food. John from Maine. After rent and power, I can get groceries. It's sad to say food comes last. Anna from Texas. The Feeding America network of food banks helps provide over six billion meals to people in need each year. I thought pantries were for less fortunate people, but anybody could be less fortunate in a day or even a second. Claire from Virginia. Now I can provide food for my family again. It's not a handout, it's a hand up. Liam from Ohio. No one should have to worry where their next meal will come from. Together, we can end hunger. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. Well, thank you for having me. And I'm excited to reveal your ancestry for Can't Juneteenth. <laughs> but going back to the roots of African ancestry, uh, my co-founder and I started African ancestry 21 years ago. Mm. And it really was an, the outcome of the community saying to my co-founder, who is a geneticist, that they wanted to know where they were from in Africa. He worked on a project uh, in Lower Manhattan on the New York African Burial Ground. Okay. And he was part of a team from Howard University that went to research this enslaved cemetery. And his job was to identify the ancestry of the bones. Mm. And so when the community found out that he could do this for bones, he was inundated with requests. They're like, well, I'm living. It should be easy, easy for you to do it for me. And that was the catalyst for commercializing his research and making this kind of testing available to everybody. Great, great, great. So it's my understanding that being female, my lineage can be traced back to th maybe a thousand or more years, apparently. Yeah, so we have two tests. One test traces maternal ancestry, okay. which is mother to mother to mother to mother, going back 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. The other test traces paternal ancestry, which is father to father to father. Uh, because you are a woman, we, you are able to trace your maternal ancestry. Okay. And so that's the test that we gave to you for this reveal. Okay. So it kind of stops with me. I didn't have daughters. But the fact that uh, my great-grandmother and my grandmother had sisters, so I guess that side of the family would 
continue on with the mitochondrial if they wanted to. I'll, I'll share this information with them yeah. because with me, with no daughters, then it stops, but with them, it can carry on. Yeah, so the, you mentioned mitochondrial DNA, and that's DNA that we all inherit from our mothers. Okay. So both boys and ba baby boys and baby girls okay. inherit it. Okay. It's maternally inherited, so it's passed from mother to child. So your results will be the same for everybody in okay. your family who come from your who comes from your great grandmother or even her mother. Okay. Um, it's the same. Do you have a son? Yes. Okay, so it's the same for your son. Okay. It's just that he won't pass that ancestry down because he it stopped, it's only passed from mother. mother. He's not mother. So. I got you. Yeah, okay. so it, it applies to everyone in the family. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, great. What do you know about your mother's 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 line? How far back can you go? I can go, <laughs> it's interesting. I can go to my great grandmother and be young. I found, my mother found a letter years ago when my great grandmother passed that the letter talked about. Uh, family in Virginia who were enslaved at one point. Mm. And it, it, it lists my great-grandmother's sister, her mother, so I can go back to that. I haven't done the research, which I plan on doing, is going down to Virginia a couple, in a, you know, spend a couple of weeks looking through records to see what I might be able to find. And on, even on my grandfather's side, I've been lucky too to know who my great-grandparents were uh, on my grandfather's side. Yeah, also. you you definitely are lucky because yeah. so many yeah. of us can't get past our grandmother. Mm -hmm. Some of us can get to our great grandmother, but going beyond that is very difficult. And that's one of the reasons why AfricanAncestry.com exists because for G for us for Black Americans. The paper trail only takes us so far. Yeah. You can use marriage records, birth records. Uh, newspaper articles and census records are included in that, but we weren't even reported as, or recorded, I should say, on a federal census until 1870. Hmm. We, we were on slave schedules before that, no names, you know, no relationships, just as property. And so when we do genealogical research like you're gonna be doing and have done with your family, eventually there's a brick wall. Yes. And so what African ancestry tests do is bridge the gap between where your paper trail stops and then where that ancestor was prior to the slave trade. Okay. So now that you've taken our test, we're going to be able to tell you where your foremother was mm -hmm. um, taken from, basically, which part of specific part of Africa she was taken from. With our test, we get much more specific. We don't say, you know, you're X percent from here or yeah. there. We say your mother's 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 people are from this country and this ethnic group or tribe. And it's, it's really interesting how it works. So the way the whole industry works is we all take someone's DNA, either you spit in a tube mm -hmm. or you swab your cheek, and then we unlock the code of the part of the DNA that we want to look at. And then we compare that DNA to DNA from people all over the world. And so if you want to find your European ancestry, you're going to want your DNA to be compared to as many European samples, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And if you're looking for African ancestry, you're going to want your DNA to be compared to as many African samples as possible. Well, the other companies have anywhere from, they might have like 70 to 80,000 sam DNA samples from all over the world. But the African samples they have represent anywhere from 2,000 to 4,300. Wow. Out of that total of that 80, total. 70, 80,000, right? So it's, it's a very small sample set that you're being compared to, whereas African ancestry, we only exist to help connect black people to Africa. So we have the largest database of African samples. We have over 33,000. Okay. And those samples are from 35 countries, all of West and Central Africa. So we have every country from Senegal down to Angola, if you know, <laughs> if yes. you know the map. Yes. Yes. Um, and then 
about 400 ethnic groups within those countries. So we're able to get much more specific. So I'm, I'm really glad that you decided to expand what you learned about your family. And then the other part about how you have gone to school with people from other African countries and, and worship with them. I think many of us have that experience and, and it makes us wonder, well, like, where am I from? Is mm -hmm. this, you know, am I from these people? Am I from these people? And so um, I'm just so glad to be able to tell you the answer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, one other question in terms of um, the, the samples that you were taking. I know you were able to repatriate some people with the actual country of origination. So is that still something that, that African ancestry uh, participates in? Yes and no. So for um, three years, from 2021 through 2023, the country of Sierra Leone decided to offer citizenship to people who could trace their maternal ancestry mm -hmm. or their paternal ancestry to Sierra Leone. Okay. And so over the course of those three years, I would say a good three to 400 people traveled to Sierra Leone and received their ancestry mm -hmm. in different ceremonies, or received their citizenship, I'm sorry, in different ceremonies. Um, at the beginning of 2024, they just they have a new minister of tourism and they decided to put the program on hold. <laughs> um, but we're hopeful mm -hmm. that uh, because people are like, what's going on? We want to go home. We want to you know, we want to become citizens. We want to contribute to the country. Um, we're hoping that this later this year that they'll reinstate the, the conferment process so that people can take advantage. Okay, so if I am Sierra Leone, I might be out of luck for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a minute though, we're, we're okay. pushing them. We really want that to happen because people do so many things. They, they travel, mm -hmm. there are people who have uh, bought land, there are people who have started philanthropic organizations or who continue to contribute to existing philanthropic organizations. There are people who uh, have bought homes and or rented apartments there, started businesses there. So it, it gives you a tangible uh, connection to yes. the country. So uh, they, they have to keep doing it. They just have to. Okay. So you have me a little anxious now. So <laughs> you uh, want to know what I, we I want to know, Dr. Page. Uh, I, I, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> well, okay. So I'm happy to be here with you, obviously. Um, not everyone gets an African result. Okay. We're mixed. You know, the fact that we're African Americans means there was mixing. Yes. And, um, but on the maternal line, we find that 92 out of 100 people who take this test get an African result. And you are in that 92%, so <laughs> I wasn't gonna okay. come here and I'm say. Like, Wait a minute, she's leading me up to what now? <laughs> no, okay. but I wanted to level set yeah. for people because there's, uh -huh. a, there's a chance that it wouldn't be African, That's but in true. your case, is definitely African. And we, um, so we, you swabbed your cheek. Yes. You sent us your swab. Our lab extracted the DNA and sequenced it, which just means they unlocked the code. That's what I like to say. I'm not a scientist, so I, mm -hmm. you know, I use regular everyday language. And then we compared your mitochondrial DNA to all the DNA in our database. Okay. And we found matches with, for you in three countries. Okay. Okay. Now, just to be clear, and I know you know this, but for people who are watching, um, present day African countries, the borders are artificially drawn. Okay. You know, the, the European powers came in during the Berlin Conference and said, we, you, we're going to carve it up this way mm -hmm. and you get this and you get that. So we're talking about present day Africa. Okay. okay? The first country on in your group is called Guinea-Bissau. Okay. And Guinea-Bissau is one of the smallest, smallest. countries uh, on the west coast of Africa. It's just below the country of Senegal. Okay. And it borders Senegal and Guinea. Okay. And um, Guinea-Bissau was uh, colonized by the Portuguese. Hmm. So Portuguese is the, the official language in Guinea-Bissau, and they have a, a, real, a really uh, powerful history of activism okay. in terms of uh, gaining independence from Portugal. 
And so a well-known Guinea-Bissau uh, activist is Emile Cabral. Okay. Uh, the people in Guinea-Bissau that you share ancestry with are the Fula. Fula. And the Fula are the same as the Fulani. They are a nomadic people. So there are Fula and Fulani all across West Africa. Okay. Uh, they, they are known for uh, trade across the desert from the okay. Sahara to the Sahel. And while there are Fula or Fulani people in Guinea and Mali and Senegal and Nigeria and Cameroon, our database is so vast that we know your connection is to Fula who are living in Guinea-Bissau today. Hmm. Okay. That activist part, that's, that's ringing a bit, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, then I would say maybe 500 miles, 600 miles from Guinea-Bissau is the country of Sierra Leone, okay. which we just talked about. Mm -hmm. And we found matches with your ancestry there as well. Okay. Now, Sierra Leone is interesting because they, that, the people of Sierra Leone were very proficient at rice farming. And so during the, the business of slavery, people were taken from Sierra Leone to plantations in South Carolina, South Carolina and yes. the Georgia Sea Islands because they were rice farm, mm -hmm. rice plantations. Okay. So it wasn't arbitrary. They didn't just go get Africans from wherever. Mm -hmm. These planters needed people who knew how to farm rice. Okay. Um, speaking of activism, you share ancestry with the Mende people living in Sierra Leone and Sinke, on, of the Amistad was a Mende man. Mende, yeah, okay. And as you know, with the story of the Amistad, yeah. I like to say they turn the ships around. <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting kind of a trend here with your ancestry. It, it, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third country, which is right next to Sierra Leone, it, they share a border, mm -hmm. um, is Liberia. Okay. And so, in Liberia, well, we know Liberia as a country that was repatriated mm -hmm. by formerly enslaved Africans. Um, and we also know Liberia as having the first female president, yes. Dr. D Ellen Sirleaf Johnson. Um, within Liberia, the people that share your, your mitochondrial DNA are the crew people. And I'm trying not to laugh because the crew were so rebellious oh my goodness. that <laughs> the colonial powers that would come, they would get the crew people to steer the ships because the waters off the coast of Liberia were so difficult to navigate. Mm -hmm. They would get these master seafarers who were the crew people to navigate the ships and help them because they had a very hard time capturing them. So it's kind of like keeping your enemies close, I guess, in a way. So rebellious, no, <laughs> nomadic farming. <laughs> All of that sort of rings a bell for yeah. me right now. Yeah, tell me what you're thinking. Uh, well, the story with my great-grandmother is, uh, unfortunately, my, uh, my great-grandfather was lynched in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So she was, she fought for the kids, my, great, my grandmother. They were put on one train, she was on another. Eventually they were reunited, but my mother's been an activist all her life. Me, my, my girlfriends usually blame it on, on my birth sign, which is Scorpio, with me and my mouth, and I'm like, well now I can blame it on Fulani and all, every, all the rest <laughs> exactly. of my African heritage. You know, some things you can't get away from. So that's what I'm gonna tell them from now. I love it, but I yeah, love it. yeah, just thinking about, you know, uh, growing up in Mississippi, the activists in my family, the females, you know, that type of thing, what they did in terms of, uh, of the civil rights movement and things like that and carrying on today with me in some of my activities. So. I'm, I'm sitting here getting chills because <laughs> there's so much of who we are yeah. and the traditions that our families practice yeah. that are informed by something we had no idea about. Yeah. yeah. And that's why taking this test is, is such a powerful and, and transformative experience because it helps to give context yes. for who we are and for who we can be. Mm -hmm. When you know you come from people who were 
you know, uh, excellent at farming, yeah. then yeah. you can, you I can have a be green a thumb. farmer. I you have can. a green thumb, so. <laughs> yeah, when you come from people who uh, wouldn't take no for an answer, who fought being enslaved, then you know that you don't have to be bound. Yeah. That your limits are limitless. limitless. Or that you have no limits. That's true. Um, and I think that that's very important, especially in a time like this. You know, I've been thinking about how the world, what's going on in the world, mm -hmm. right? And then we can kind of narrow it down to what's happening in Africa with the Congo and the Sudan. Yeah. And then we can get even closer to home with Haiti. And then we know what's happening to us here. every day here. here. Um, we have the power. We have the, we have the resilience. We have every single capa bit of capacity to improve our, our situation and yes. to fight injustice and to, to make our lives what we want them to be. And so and I'm that just history so- history can't be erased. Exactly, it's in your DNA. It's in my DNA, it's it can't in your be DNA. erased. So congratulations, welcome to the African Ancestry Thank family. You. And you'll Thank have you. to travel with us to Sierra Leone I, on our next I trip. I am looking forward to it every minute, so just give me a call. In fact, we, you know, we'd love to do a story on it. Hmm, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, that would be wonderful. Thank, Thank you so you. much for trusting us. Thank you, us. Dr. Page. And I, I want to make it. sure that you know that your DNA has been destroyed. Okay. We do not sell oh, or share keep, it. Okay. We don't monetize it in any way. We destroy it. Thank you. Thank You're you very welcome. much, and we appreciate you being here. Thanks. Okay. I am what child hunger looks like in America. I am a nine-year-old boy who hopes a friend invites me to a sleepover so I can have dinner. I am a 15-year-old girl who goes for walks during lunch so my friends won't know I don't have anything to eat. I am a 13-year-old boy who gets into fights at school just because I'm hungry. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in seven American children who struggle with hunger. Kids you pass by every day but never knew they were hungry. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Being a dad, I'm able to see everything through my children's eyes. My daughter Zoe, she's happy, she's loving, she's caring, she's sweet. I guess she's that growing bundle of joy. My dad is just the best dad ever. He says, I will keep you safe the whole way, and he does. Life is sometimes hard. My mom and dad have to go without because they want us kids to have food in our stomach. The food bank is a place where my family gets help getting food. It helps my family because sometimes we don't have as much. If I had one wish for my dad, it would be to help him out. Because I just love him too much.